Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling a blessing. Like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Well, with that being said, another video, another vid, homie, another vid. So let's get right into the topic. Skip all the shenanigans, straight to the point. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. An individual asked me this. Can you make a video on when someone gets validated? Explain validation definition and what it is the process when you become validated. What charge? What changes for the inmate? Okay. Um, see, on the main line, it's different. Trust me, when uh, when when IGI usually has all the information that they want and that they gain from other inmates, from other informants, to validate a lot of people. Only time they do, they, they the only time they validate you is because they'll hold it for quite some time. Most of the biggest validations come from, you know, confidential information, 1030s and 812s. 812s use you when an individual either locks it up off the yard and he decides to say, you know what, I can't be on the yard with these particular individuals. So that's when he provides the information saying that, you know what, I did this, this and that. Me and this individual can't get along for these reasons. Then he provides information. That way, he can never be on that yard with this individual ever again. 1030s, on the other hand, are just confidential information. There's a lot of times, a lot of, on the main line, there's a lot of people that are telling regardless and still remain on the main line and no one ever knows about it. That's why people get validated so much even on the main lines. But, you know... Popular popular opinion says that the only people that tell are on SNYs, but then why do you think so many people get validated on the main lines? So, you know, I just thought I'd point that out, though. You know, just a fact. But that's usually how it works. Most of the time, they're going to validate you. It's a 10-point process. They're going to give you a couple of points if you have, like, you know, Sur or the N on it or the Falmetto Bird, XIV, the 14 or the 13. You know, you got certain particular lightning bulbs. Uh, whatever... Tattoos they have documented that are symbolisms and that symbolize that you're connected, you're affiliated, you're associated with these particular prison gangs. That's going to get you points. Your charges, depending if they were crimes against other oppositional gang members, will get you points. But the main part of your process, your validation, if three people tell on you, each one's two points, two, four, six. No matter, no matter how many times you get told on, those points are going to add up until, the, until, until they feel like they have enough information to say, you know what, you're associated with the AB, you're associated with the Mexican Mafia, you're associated with the NF, so you're associated with the NLRs, and then they're going to snatch you up. But they're only going to snatch you up when they can actually pin you something to the main line that's going to validate you know, your committee action and to the warden saying that hey man his he's a threat to the safety and security of the institution so it had to be like a riot a pegada or you know smuggling conspiracy charges that's when they'll really go and snatch you up most of the time a lot of people already have validation packets pending on them they're just the igi just waits for the right time they they play a little chess game they want to see how much more you could dig a hole for yourself validated on the um being validated on the main line as northern structure I got it because I received a couple of 1030s stating that I was upholding, you know, leadership positions. And I had, they had information not necessarily like charging me, committing me to these current, these acts, but they were, it was in connection to particular removals where my name came up. Like the individuals that got removed mentioned my name saying that, oh, well, I got removed, but I, all I know is this individual is holding this position. So he probably was responsible for making that call. But they couldn't prove it because it was just more or less hearsay, second guess. So it made it inadmissible to the courts, but it was enough information for them to build a case towards me. And I got the 14 in the end on my back. That was validation points. I got validation points because I received a gang enhancement on my commit on my crime, which gave me 10 years. So that automatically became two points. So after all, once they gather up their 10 is when I received the validation packet. The validation packet was served to me and the, and the celly that removed me in 2012. 
But based on the fact that I was already crossing over to the S and Y by calling, you know, just pretty much calling the quits after the second thing and try to beat me. They try to beat me on the tier is when my validation became it's called it's called under the under the legal terms it's called mute. Mute meaning that it was rendered useless based on the fact that I've already disassociated myself from this organization. So if I would have made it to, if they would have said, you know what, we don't believe you, we're gonna send you to the shoe. From the shoe, you can val- you can you can beat your validation there and get the de- and then follow up with the debriefing profits to the THU and so on and so forth. Thought have been a whole different story, and then more likely, more likely I would have spent it up. I spent I would have spent a lot more time in the shoe. But based on the fact that when all the removals were taking place on me, and I went to committee, every time you go to a committee, whenever you get assaulted on the on the yard, you're gonna. The IGI has to be present. There, there was one IGI do right there, and he, and he was telling the ward, and I look, we have this validation package serving both of them, but um, you know, the circumstances kind of changed because he's here. So the warden already had made it a point, like, okay, he's been the victim twice. We're not gonna put him on the main line. He chose to call it a quits. We're just gonna send him to the SNY, and we got it dismissed. So I didn't have to undergo the whole legalities and the and the due process of it, but I got to review the packet. But when you review the packet, they're going to they're gonna black out all the names of the individuals who told, but they're just pretty much saying like, hey, bro, this is what we had on you, you know? So I was able to beat the system without having to go through the debriefing process within the TSU. Thank God, bro, because that's a, that's a burden that I don't think nobody really wants to carry. But getting validated on the S and Y, I got validated under the same process. Remember, when Corcoran Shu... They did all that hunger strikes, and then the end of hostilities came out, and they did all the hunger strikes to being that, you know, the cruel and unusual punishment. They actually sh- made it sh- more strict to validate people. So when I got validated on the SNY, it was more or less, um, I had a bunch of 1030s, and I committed multiple batteries on inmates that were pretty much the, the victims that we beat up told on us and pretty much said, you know, they, we did this for the furtherance of the Northern Rider movement. So I got stacks and stacks right here, and I can show you guys, of paperwork validating me and connecting me to the Northern Rider movement. I have the, I have the, the wet, uh, I had the, the Northern Riders on my chin, the stars, the broken stars. I have the, the Playboy bunnies, the Playboy bunny right here, the Playboy bunny right here. All of it was enough information. But what validated me the most was I have like maybe six or eight people. And that validation packet testifying saying that, you know, dropping, you know, 1030 saying that I was well connected. I was an influential member. I had a heavy voice or I was connected to Snoop. They had letters from me to Snoop. That's what got me validated. And the part that 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 when you're on the main line, that validation process means you're going to go to Corker and Shoe. And from Corker and Shoe, you're going to spend an indeterminate amount of time. The only way to get out of an indeterminate shoe is go through the THU program, which is the transitional housing unit, and you're going to debrief. They're gonna, you're going to answer 25 questions, debrief on your organization, and then you have to program from six months to a year, earning specific privileges. But you're pretty much going to go to the hole. You're not gonna, you're, every 90 days, you'll get like a one phone call. Uh, you get visits behind the glass. You know, your program trains. You don't get to be on the mainline no more. But on the S and Y, when you get validated, It just means that now you're identified as a validated gang member on the yard. So anytime something happens with your group, if they can't find who's responsible for it, they can just snatch you up and say, you know what, you're going to be held accountable for it then. That's why Snoop, no matter what, Snoop can be in one facility and something happens to him uh, uh, within our people at another facility. He can get snatched up and be like, hey, bro, you might want to go ahead. And they, the IGI and ISU play a weird game. Like, hey, bro, you're going to go to the hall painting this investigation for this removal that happened in High Desert. And he had nothing to do with it. He probably don't even know what's going on and who we hit. But he can suffer from it. Or if the, the two individuals that batted this inmate, they go to the hall for like six months to a year. Then they're going to snatch up every member of that organization and val- that were validated and send them to the hole for six months to a year. Be like, hey, man, we're, you're pending investigation. An investigation while being v- under validation is eight months in the hole. So sometimes I would have to spend eight months in the hole off something that some of my compadres, my playboys did on the yard. And I would sit there in eight months like, I ain't got nothing to say, bro. I'll just chill for that next eight months and I'll come back out once the investigation is over. Because it's going to be inconclusive. Like, we didn't find nothing on them. But they can use that validation process just to hold you for eight months in the hole under a shoot term saying you're pending investigation. 
and they can extend that investigation, extend that investigation. You'll go to committee every 90 days. And they'll tell the warden, the IGI will tell the warden, hey, bro, we still need more time. We're still investigating. He's tied to it. So the warden will approve it. And you're, now you're doing And you know, it's a little illegal, but by the time you make it to the courts, you're already getting kicked out to the hole and you kind of pretty much forget about it. But that's what happens. Your program changes. Being validated on the S and Y, you just means you're walking on eggshells. You're walking on thin ice. So it kind of makes you a little bit more paranoid and you might makes you want to think about, you know, you start telling your brothers like, hey, bro, if you guys go through with this, do realize that some of us that are validated are going to be penalized for it, for this committee's action, this committee decision, your guys' actions and us victimizing these particular individuals. So, you know, sometimes as, 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 as members, we'd have to factor that in. Like, look, bro, if we don't do this right, the homies are going to get snatched up to the hole. Most of the time, the homies that are validated as writers will, in fact, be well-influential members. That's why they got told on the most. So losing them off the yard just makes it a lot more difficult and causing the unbalance and the established order. But that's pretty much how the validation works. The charges that I got uh, convicted of by the homies is because I was out of state allowing homeboys to get gang-related tattoos. And because of those gang-related tattoos, I wound up getting a lot of people validated. There was 53 Southerners in out of state in Oklahoma that got validated under Mexican Mafia because they made two individuals Mexican Mafia members out of state when I was in Oklahoma. 43 of us got validated because I allowed so many homeboys to get tatted up. and But they were validating us on anything. But a lot of the validations came from, they were giving the homies like two or three points if they had fresh new tattoos. So homies were getting like, you know, Falmetto Burrs, their Avadios, X4, XIV. You know, I let a homie get a red baño tatted across his face. I got a lot of people validated. And back then, before the new shoe term kicked in and the new policies for the validation process kicked in, that means I sent almost 43 individuals to Pelican Bay and Corker Shoe because of my decision making, my stupidity. But hey, I was only 20, 23, 24, and my son was like, hey, if we'll be the bad guy for once, we'll let them get tatted up, but we're not in California jurisdiction. Those rules don't apply, and I did it, and look what happened. 43 individuals probably underwent that shoe program for a long time. All those struggles, all that hardship, all that punishment, all that mistreatment, that cruel and unusual punishment because of my decision making. That's why I was facing charges when I came back to California. And even more so, out of them 43 individuals, how many of those individuals kept it solid and didn't break? You know, so I put people in a bad predicament to go to Corker Shoe and, real, and sit there and have nothing but time to think. Say, you know what, do I want to spend, you know, my rest of my term in here? Or do I want to be on the main line? Do I want to be on the SNY, talking to my daughter, talking to my son, talking to my family, actually walking the yard instead of just spending time in the hole over pride? You know, that's the kind of positions I put a lot of people in that, that affected me in the long run. But the validation process is pretty much that simple. When you get validated and you go to Corcoran Shoe, you're stuck there for life. Your privileges are very limited as opposed to the main line. That's why I think, you know, it was an incredible act that the individuals did that hunger strike for that, lo that long and fought that punishment, that cruel and unusual treatment that was going on and got all these uh, adv advocates involved, all these lawyers involved. Because I don't think nobody, even if we're all we're all on the we're all on the main lines and all on this and why it's connected to these organizations, politicking, we shouldn't have to suffer that bad because of our now if you did something wrong or you committed these acts, you know, you're under this kind of leadership where you just got some powerful people. I mean, that's why they send them to send powerful people to the ADX in Florida and Florence. So, you know, what I mean I get it. I get why it was instilled and it was in place for certain particular political powers to be restricted and restrained. But now the validation process is a little bit different. I don't know how it is up to date. I was just telling you guys how it was back in my day. But that's pretty much how the validation works. Most of the time, you're going to get validated off individuals telling on you, on the main line, on the SNY. So with that being said, if you guys want to see the paperwork, I can show you guys the paperwork. I just got to go through it. It's a, it's a stack full. I can read you guys the statements. Let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to, you know, showcase it. And I'll show you guys the pictures, the validations, the pictures they took of us. And, you know, how they look at your tattoos and how they identify you. Like, it, my, I got a paperwork right here that's, that identifies each of my points and how they validated me and what write-ups and who I beat up is what got me to be validated. If you guys want to see it, though, I just don't want to be on here bragging about it and boasting about it. So you guys let me know in the comments section. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done.
Peace.